Hey there, Bob Four against Costa Garden. Welcome to the OCG Fam Show to you, my YouTube buddies. What's going on? Let me know in the comments and we'll talk about it after the show. But right now, let's just get into the show. It's kind of a long clip, but a good one. We're talking about uh, something that I, I, I find amazing even still, that you can take a little piece of this plant and make a whole new plant out of that. Uh, taking cuttings. Uh, Scott goes into in-depth how uh, Nectar for the Gods nutrients can be helpful in that process. But more importantly than that, I think just kind of the whole process and his experience with doing that over the many, many years he's been gardening. I think you'll find it informative and entertaining. I'd like you to watch it, and I'll talk to you after. Okay, Graybush 1976, sup? Long time commenter. Hey guys, I know this subject may be covered in the Nectar Bible, but wondering if you might have some tips on what Nectar products to use as a prep soak when taking cuttings. What products assist in transplant shock? Does Nectar have any feeding schedule suggestions for other garden plants like tomatoes and peppers? Happy New Year, guys. Be safe. Have fun. So I'm guessing this would fall more in the foliar region. Well, no, because I mean, no. conditioning the cubes are nice. Cause it oh, gives I got them, you. And really with cube conditioning or the root, yeah. you know, root uh -huh. riots or whatever they are, I mean, the only thing I've ever done is a seaweed humic acid soak, yeah. and it's just for the uh, plant growth regulators that come in seaweed uh -huh. and the humics to kind of buffer the humates and make that connection between the seaweed hormones and the plant to be able to absorb them in. But if we're talking like actual nectar nutrients with Zeus and yeah. Poseidon, yeah. you know, a couple okay. drops of each, and you know, if what drops. I do is a little tub, yeah, you know, a uh -huh. couple, a like quarter teaspoon of. Poseidon and a few drops of Zeus make it in a nice, I'd say a dark tea, uh -huh. really light coffee. Okay, yeah. yeah. Pre-soak them. And what we've always done is instead of wringing them out, you uh -huh. just take them and I just, I whip them one time. Okay. You whip them, that gets most of the volume out, but it keeps them really moist. And then I cut in there. But there's in the Bible a few different recipes of foliar feeding the days before you take cuttings. Okay. Is what I always have been focusing on. One thing that changed my whole cloning game yeah. was I used to just take cuttings, put them in, watch them wilt for three to four days, and then slowly curl them out of it <laughs> if they ever do, or just put on new growth and all the old leaves die. Okay. And that, I'm like, man, what is going well, on? Well, and I realized, well, I just cut this baby off of its food source yeah. and then said, hey, survive with uh, no backup in the plant. Uh, and then, you know, meeting Frank 30 years ago and doing all our stuff and realizing that plants love foliar feeding. They yeah. store immediately the nutrition in the foliage yeah. when you foliar feed. So taking that knowledge and going, all right, I'm gonna be two to three days from now, I'm gonna take 10 cuttings off the top. So I focus on a Medusa, Athena, uh, depending on Poseidon, sure. Zeus. Um, and I foliar feed all the tops two to three times a day for uh -huh. two to three days. And I get them all fed on top. So now they got these reserves yeah. in there. Uh -huh. I take the cuttings, I put them in a nice hormone soaked rip ball. And uh -huh. basically by the time they start to show any signs of hunger, uh -huh. the roots will start showing out of the bottom because they're finally, they're sustaining life with what they've been stored sure. with. Uh -huh. They're still taking the photo cells from the, the lighting. And then as soon as they start to feel like, oh man, we're running out of nutrition, that triggers the plant to respond by sending out roots faster to go find nutrition so they don't wilt or die. So I found my success rate went up, my uh, the transplant shock uh -huh. and limp, that dry out period doesn't really occur. They just stay perky throughout the entire cutting cycle. It's not a guarantee, but that's what I found that worked the best. Okay, what do you think of that? Informative, entertaining, helpful, agree, disagree? Uh, anything to add? Throw it in the comments. Uh, I love you. I'll see you tomorrow. The OCG Fam Show is pretty good. It happens every day. It's the OCG Fam Show. See you tomorrow.